welcome to Charting New Paths from Pre-K through 12 Education, a podcast by Solution Tree. Today, we launch a special mini-series within Charting New Paths called RCG Founders, Education Leadership, and Legacy. RCG stands for Results Coaching Global, a company that specializes in leadership development through coaching and training and so much more. This mini-series will spotlight the founders of Results Coaching Global and their education leadership journey. As their stories unfold, discover how these purpose-filled educators work collaboratively with one another and with education leadership to create high levels of learning for teachers and for students. I'm your host, Prisma Lopez Marin. Enjoy today's episode. Hello, everyone. In today's episode, I'd like to introduce our co-host, Kim Ennis. She is the general manager of Results Coaching Global. Thank you so much, Kim, for joining us here at the Actual Solution Tree Studio. Now, can you tell us about your role and the connection it has with Solution Tree? Sure. Hi, Prisma, and thank you so much for having us here today. Thrilled to be here. As Prisma mentioned, I am Kim Ennis, the General Manager of Results Coaching Global, or RCG, as we fondly refer to it. Um, So Solution Tree... um, works with Results Coaching Global. You can think of Solution Tree as the parent of RCG. And so we're thrilled to work collaboratively as we offer coaching services um, throughout the United States and K through 12 education. So uh, the founders um, who will get to speak to one of them today, the founders um, did reach out to Solution Tree to uh, let them know about their business. And so I'm just thrilled to be here on behalf of the, as the general manager um, as we work together and be able to bring coaching services to school districts here in the U.S. Thank you for sharing that with us. Now, for our first episode with Results Coaching Global, we'll be talking with a Results Coaching Global founder, Karen Anderson. Ms. Anderson will share with us the impact of professional development, her journey towards education leadership, and her experience with Results Coaching Global. We're excited to talk with Karen today. A bit of information about her. Before we get started with the interview, Karen has been a public school educator for over 45 years. In addition to coaching, her expertise has been facilitating groups focused on working collaboratively to discover solutions and improve processes and delivery systems. She is a national trainer and has served as an adjunct faculty member at Texas A&M University Commerce. From 1996 to 2004, she served as the executive director of the Texas Staff Development Council and was recognized as the recipient of their Lifetime Achievement Award. Well, we can't wait to hear more about all of these accomplishments and other things that um, we would like to learn about our founder today. With us today, Results Coaching Global founder is Karen Anderson. Thank you so much for joining us for this episode. Well, what an honor. What a pleasure to be here today and to have this opportunity. Thank you so much for that. Uh, It will be exciting to talk about this process and this journey of becoming a coach. Now, Ms. Anderson, can you share with us, let's just get started with that, how you started your journey in education as a teacher, admin, etc., and your experience with professional development at that time? Absolutely. I would uh, treasure the opportunity to do this and, and not to go on forever. I want to give the Reader's Digest version of this. So I started out as an ed- educator in Hopkinsville, Kentucky. And that first job that I have set the stage for my whole career. I was a full day Head Start teacher, which meant that I had children in the morning and then I visited in the homes in the afternoon. And for a small town, Texas girl, that was an eye-opening experience because many of the homes did not have a traditional floor. It was a dirt floor. Many of the rooms were not separated at all. All rooms were accessible. It was a luxury to have maybe a shower curtain to separate the the eating area from the, the sleeping area. So that's where I became a champion for the underdog. That's where my passion for working with uh, students that are not totally successful was founded, grounded, and it became the foundation for everything I've done since that time. When I returned to Texas to be a teacher, surprisingly, the field had become saturated with teachers. 
And so there was no room for me to become an educator at that time. And so instead, I had to rely on my high school typing, shorthand, et cetera, and become an executive secretary for one year while I continued to search for what I really wanted to do when I grew up, and that was to be a teacher. And so what I did, my friends invited me to an evening PTA meeting, and their principal looked at me and said, you really want to be an educator because you're coming to an evening PTA meeting, and I can hardly get my teachers to come <laughs> to an evening PTA meeting. So he adopted me. From that moment forward, he became my mentor. And he said, I want you to take off a, a day of work, and I will invite uh, or introduce you to all of my principal friends so that when hiring season comes open, they will have a candidate to hire. Long story short, he was able to hire me as his third grade teacher. And he continued throughout my career with uh, with the system to be my big mentor. From there, I grew into being a counselor for the system. And that very quickly turned into a request from my district to go to the Education Service Center, which is an intermediate uh, entity that's in between the T Texas state office and school systems. And for eight years, I worked at the, the service center at Region 10. And then I came back to my district, the same district. So I had interrupted service. And I came back as the administrator of professional development. So professional development has been a lifelong part of the work that I've done in education. And so when it was time for me to exit from my school system, we received the U.S. Department of Ed Model Professional Development Program Award for the system that we had created for learning for all the adults in our system. So it seemed like that was a good time to be leaving. Well, all the while, I was also, as Kim has said, being the executive director of the Texas Staff Development Council, which was under the National Staff Development Council. Now, that organization has transformed into Learning Forward, and then the state affiliate is Texas Learning Forward. But it was through that relationship with NSDC that I received the invitation to go to life coach training, and that was a game changer. That was a, a pivotal point not only in my career, but in my life, because that is where I fell in love with coaching. And that happened in, over 20 years ago. And coaching has been my work ever, ever since then. So that is, in a nutshell, is my journey and sort of what brings me to today. So great. And thank you, Karen, so much for sharing that. And what amazing story you have there, just talking about humble beginnings and visiting those schools. It's quite a powerful story. Um, let's think back just to kind of the beginning of Results Coaching Global and what inspired the idea to create RCG? And did you envision it to emerge to what it is right now? Well, thank you for that invitation to speak about this wonderful part of the journey. In 2000. 2001, we did receive the gift from the National Staff Development Council to attend life coach training to get everything that was offered free to us with one condition. And that condition was that in the year following our training, we would coach school leaders that had, uh, that were low performing, had high populations of very diverse students and were not doing well with the high stakes accountability that was required of school leaders. And so that was our paying forward for the wonderful life coach training that we received. Now, every day we rode a yellow school bus. This is a great metaphor, a yellow school bus to the training site. And every day at the conclusion of the day, we would look at each other and we would say, wow, this is something wow, this is life-changing. Wow, this is the next phase of our life. And we said to ourselves then, we said, if every CEO 
if every powerful athlete can have a coach in the wing, wings, every educator deserves to have a coach. Therefore, we committed our work there on the spot in that yellow school bus to working with educators. And our mission and vision says we're working for three C's. We want confident, competent, and courageous school leaders. And so that has been our mission since 2002, to work with leaders in that way. Now, you talked about bringing us to the present, Kim. So at some point, we said, hmm, and you can see it on this up here. I have a little gray hair up there, yeah. which would suggest at 45 years in education that it might be a good time to think about legacy. And so we began to look for a parent. We began to look for somebody who cared about our work with education as much as we did. And lo and behold, we found Solution Tree. And so that became our potential partner. And we reached out and thankfully, you reached back. Solution Tree reached back. And now we are a subsidiary of Solution Tree. And we're extremely proud and pleased to be that. So thank you for asking. Of course. And so did you um, envision it to be what it is now from all, from that magic school bus moment <laughs> <laughs> to what it is now prior to Solution Tree? Well, uh, we dream pretty big and we say that coaches ask for what they want. So all along our journey, we have asked for a lot from each other. And it we traveled from being a nonprofit to a for-profit. And I would just tell you that that was not the strong suit of a bunch of educators. We were used to working in classrooms, working with kids, working with teachers, but not so savvy with regard to how to sell, how to bring business, etc. But here's what I want to tell you. Our first course, Leadership Coaching for High Performance, became our premier course. And it was through word of mouth, word of mouth, that has brought us this far. Now, what we believe is with Solution Tree, we can go bigger, better, broader, more excellent. Because again, our dream is that all educators would have a coach. So even though our work has spread across the United States, we have clients all across the United States, we know that we have more school leaders that would benefit from having our training. So that's our dream still, Prisma, is to expand it even to a greater scale. Well, absolutely. And also because um, there's so many administrators and people who need leaders that need coaches who are new. A lot of turnover and things like that are happening um, because of COVID and, and such. And, and even before COVID, a lot of changes have occurred, um, which I absolutely do agree that uh, having someone who can be there, um, not just for support, but for more moral, like educators, administrators, teachers have so much responsibility. You're not just there to educate. You're there to practically raise somebody else's child into becoming a good person in the world through education, of course, um, but I can go on. Uh, so as the ed education system does change, um, educators have to also adapt to these changes. So can you tell us more about how your education leadership coaching has evolved as well? Well, thank you for, uh, for asking that. And it was really important what you said, Prisma, that when you talked about school leaders, you just didn't talk about the administrators. You said the teachers, the coaches, the and that's exactly what we believe. We believe there are leaders at every level in a system. That's one of our core beliefs. And so when we come in to train, we train everybody vertically, horizontally in the system because it gives a common language to the educators. And it also becomes a way of the, a communication style that motivates and inspires others to be their best self. And so what we found was, and the, one of the reasons, I'll go back to us choosing Solution Tree to be our parent, 
one of the reasons we did that was because we were coming into systems after Solution Tree had been there and people were raving fans for Solution Tree. And this is the one thing they would say to us. We are so committed to PLCs, to professional learning communities, and we still are not talking to each other within those PLCs in the way that is getting the best from all the people. And so a lot of what is in our leadership coaching for high performance is communication skills. How do we use what we know about the brain research, about the trust research? How do we know, how do we use that then to take or match our communication skills and the way we talk to people so that we are inviting them to be collaborators, to be on board and moving in the same direction with each other, which is the kind of leader that is required in this day and era. Collaboration is the name of the game. PLCs is a part of that, a huge part of that. And now coaching is following right along as an important component. In fact, our first book is called Results Coaching, the new essential for school leaders. You got to have it. You got to be a coach leader in terms of it. One little thing I wanted to say, Prisma, is it's joyful to work with systems over time. That's our best work when we are immersed in a system over time. And what we notice is we will first meet a person when they are a coach. When we come back on another year, they will be an administrator. And we have had HR directors tell us that co because coaches have mastered some of this language that we're talking about, that they are heads and above some of the other people that are applying for administrative roles. And in fact, one HR director, just to tell a little story, came to their professional development person in their district and said, I have noticed that when your coaches show up to interview, their skills are superior to anybody else in the interview process. And this is what they said. I want some of what they have. <laughs> and so for the very next year, the HR director was in our training. So it cuts across in every direction. So thank you for asking about that, Prisma. We're really proud of that seminar. Such a great story. And thank you, Karen, for telling us about that. Um, and I know that you've coached at all different levels. So you've coach from teachers and teacher teams and instructional coaches and all the way up through leadership roles. So could you tell us um, what's the feedback that you've received, especially from those that you've coached up into that leadership level? Thank you. Uh, and superintendents too. Let's not forget that superintendents are in the list too. We coach a lot of superintendents because you all know this, as you ascend in leadership, it becomes lonelier and lonelier. And so who do I talk to? Well, a coach is a great person that you can talk to because of their commitment to confidentiality and to helping you be the best you can be. So just had to put that little plug in there. <laughs> People say things like this to us. This is actually what they say. This is life changing. And they say, this is not just changing my professional life, it's changing my home life. And when you get that, that is the best compliment ever because you want it to be in their life. We say coaching is not so much what you say or what you do as it is who you are. And so what they're saying to us with that compliment is, I want this to be in who I am at my core whether I'm at home or at school. So that's one of the things they say. Now, on a lighter note, we've had people actually say to us, thank you for saving my marriage. Whoa. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's well, a huge impact. Yeah. Or sometimes they'll say, thank you for saving my relationship with my son or with my daughter. Because, and especially if they're teenagers, and the way they talk to their teenagers. So that's been another huge compliment that we have received. Now, what happens is a bond 
between a coach and a client. And so I'm going to tell you that I have some clients that I've been working with for over a decade. And one of them told me recently, said my superintendent offered to me an executive coach from the corporate world. And I said, no, thank you. I want my RCG coach. And so those are some of the testimonies that come back to us from these relationships that are formed with people through coaching. Now on the seminar side, it's happening every day now. People receive our training in one district and they become a leader in another system. And here we come right behind them. They want us coming to their system. So that just happened this morning and it happened yesterday as well. And so that is a way that we know that this is highly impactful in the lives of the people that we serve. Now, I haven't mentioned that we're an accredited coach training program. So we don't just do leadership coaching for high performance. We have a series of eight seminars that should a person choose to become or get on the journey to be a credential coach. And so we have a progression of seminars. And in fact, several of our systems have now made our level one course and our level two course required if you're going to be a leader in that system. And again, leader is broadly defined, Prisma, as you said, teacher, coach, Mm -hmm. superintendent, assistant principal, those are all leaders in the system. So that's a little bit of the domino piece of what we do and how important it is in the lives of others. Here's one more thing. In our mission, I mentioned the three C's, confident, competent, and courageous. Here's another testimony that people will say. You have given me the courage to do what I already knew I needed to do in the first place. And so that's what kind of relationship a coach can create with another person. And that's powerful because um, at times scholars, any professional um, may doubt what their capabilities are because of the things that have shifted um, as far as how the sector moves and how things are going. Um, but at the, at the same time, this is kind of like a refresher. No, you are in your field and you are a professional and you know what you're doing. And uh, it's, it's such a great support that um, Results Coaching Global provides um, as, our, as the coaches provide for educators as well. Um, so I wanted to go back to the book, if we're allowed to talk about the book here. Um, can you, where is it coming out or is it already out or where, where is that at? We have two books that are out, two books that are out. One is Results Coaching, The New Essential for School Leaders. And the second one is Results Coaching Next Steps. And we're in conversation with Miss Kim right here uh, uh, for a third book, for writing something new and fresh that will be coming out. So that's more like a, a toolkit or a tool. I'm not sure exactly what it will be. We're in the early stages of talking about that, but we're sort of getting some energy around that. Right, Kim? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Very exciting. I'm glad that you brought that up to to look at writing um, a solution tree resource and maybe more about the blueprint and a lot of uh, the great concepts behind what Results Coaching Global is and, um, you know, bringing into print all of the success that has been around um, this movement for so long. So I'm glad that you mentioned that. Thank you. Um, and Karen, too, since I think you touched on it just a little bit, do you mind just to tell us a little bit more about how Results Coaching Global is a school and what that means to those that could be interested in getting accredited um, as a coach? Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, the credentialing body is the International Coaching Federation. So we are not a credentialing body. However, we are a school that prepares you to take your let's say diploma or your certificate of completion that you've completed 125 hours. That's, that's how much is required there. 125 hours of coach specific training. And so, as I mentioned, we have five courses that lead or support that goal of 125 hours. 
also uh, as a part of the journey, then coaching is required. And so to get the first level of a credit, uh, first level of credential from ICF takes a hundred hours of coaching and mentoring is another part. And so in addition to being instructors and coaches, we're also mentors. We're also assessors because we assess people that are taking our written exam and our oral exam to receive that certificate of completion. So how well did I answer that question, Kim? So great. Thank you so much for sharing those details with us, Karen. I think it's really important for those to know just the resources that are offered here at Solution Tree and with Results Coaching Global and how um, we are a school. And so it's just important to know that those teachers that are interested uh, there certainly is a path forward, and it's with a lot of the resources that RCG has to offer. Thank you. Thank you for that. Now, I could talk to you forever. I have all the questions. You're just, I love your energy. Um, I know, like, we haven't really touched base because this is your episode, but we do want to um, share that there is, there are four founders here, and we want uh, you to share with us more about your um co-leaders in this results coaching global journey that you've had so all founders are leaving a great legacy individually of course of the work that you've done in results coaching global um what is your own personal outlook for what you hope rcg to continue to evolve into and then i'll go back to talking about your co-leaders all right thank you for that well uh, I may get a little emotional here. Oh, that's all right. Because there, there is a personal, there's a personal drive here. I have a granddaughter who had surgery on her brain in the first year of her life. And so as a result, as educators, you know that what that means in terms of school. That means she's going to struggle. That means she's going to require a lot of support. And my dream is for her to have coach leaders that look at what she can do mm -hmm. versus what she cannot do. And that's what we teach when we teach presumption of positive intent, presuming the best in that sweet child, that looking for her gifts and her strengths. She may not be so strong in one area, but believe me, she can draw you a beautiful beautiful illustration that is just awe-inspiring. So I want her to have leaders like that, that care deeply for the students they serve. And coaching is one of the ways that can happen. First through the seminars where we get language that lifts people up rather than diminishing them. We want to lift people up because everybody wants to be seen Everybody wants to be heard, and I want that for every child in our United States of America. I want that for my own grandchildren to have somebody that really lifts them up to their best self. So that's my personal stake in the game is my, my brother says to me, sis, he says, why are you working so hard? He says, you, you're retired. Why are you working so hard? And without hesitation, I can say this. This is the most important work of my career. Mm -hmm. This is the part that makes the greatest difference because it is impacting the future leaders of our schools. Right. Wow. Absolutely. And to go on to segue, Prisma, to my wonderful colleagues and partners, they believe as I believe. And so while we were all successful educators in different districts, we were pulled together by professional development. Professional development is the string that w brought us all together and our association with the National Staff Development Council, now called Learning Forward. So we each have our own gifts, and that shows up in terms of the responsibilities that we have to this organization. But when we decided to be for profit and we four founders took this bull by the horn, so to speak, I'm a Texan, bull by the horn, that's a good metaphor there. When we took this challenge, 
we each brought excellence from our own success as educators that morphed it into times three, times four in this partnership with one another. Wow. Well, thank you so much for sharing. Um, it's just so exciting to hear uh, the different sides of, of this whole thing that you've created together. I know that Again, I, I can't stress enough how much I admire educators and just um, everybody in the field because educators are among, I keep saying this, I probably in every episode, but educators are among the humblest uh, professionals out there because you don't realize how much difference you've created in people's lives. People are telling you, you helped their marriage. You've, you know, encouraged them to be more, um, to continue to be who they are. Um, so it's just, it's, I can't even stress enough, like how amazing you are as an individual, let alone, um, the four of you as co uh, leaders, co-founders of results coaching global. Um, Kim, do you have anything else that we, you'd like to talk about with Ms. Karen? Sure. Yeah. Karen, just thank you so much for sharing your passion there. And I think it's just so great to hear because it's something that we hear from so many educators is their passion and day to day, what keeps you moving forward. And I think it's just important to stress here, you know, and um, in the day to day work with educators, it's not easy. And so to remember that, you know, where your passion lies and where your heart is and um, the goal, you know, whether it's your granddaughter or child or student or that special student in your classroom, you know, there's always, um, you know, we want so much better for them and everything that we can do every single day to help prepare them for their futures. Um, really, you know, what's at the heart of education. So thank you so much for just sharing insights with your personal story. And then also, of course, all of your professional successes as well. Well, thank you to both of you for the invitation to be on this podcast today and to have the opportunity and the ability to share this story. So thank you. Absolutely. And do you have anything else you would like to leave us with um, as far as advice goes for anybody interested in either the school or reaching out to you uh, for more information? Well, while coaches don't aspire to giving advice, that's one <laughs> of the things we refrain from. I would say that anybody that wants to have additional conversations certainly are welcome. And I, my email is Karen at resultscoachingglobal.com. And I would treasure having the opportunity to speak to anyone about this. Well, Results Coaching Global founder, Ms. Karen Anderson, it has been an honor to speak with you and also to meet you. Um, you've accomplished so much for the education sector and then also for so many people that you have not just influenced in a positive, Im impactful way um, through education, but also in their life, as you mentioned earlier. And it's just so powerful to see how much uh, support can provide for our educators that need it. Absolutely. Um, so thank you for sharing your education leadership journey with us. And Kim, thank you for navigating this episode with us as well as co-hosts um, as we learn more about Results Coaching Global. Thank you. Thank you. To learn more about Results Coaching Global and all of the great resources that we have to offer, including seminars, webinars, and we even do book studies too, you can visit our website at resultscoachingglobal.com and feel free to reach out to me as well. Again, I'm Kim Ennis, the general manager of RCG. My email address is kim.ennis at resultscoachingglobal.com. Wonderful. Thank you for that information. And I'm sure as we are excited internally, other people that are learning more about Results Coaching Global cannot wait to hear about um, what else is to offer and then the things that are happening um, currently and then what other things are going to continue. Um, and then also, we can't wait. I'm so excited to hear about our other founders that we're still yet to talk to. Um, so that, um, keep on lookout on those episodes as well. Now for our sponsor message here at Solution Tree, we share your vision to transform education to ensure learning for all. We can help you make this vision a reality. No other professional learning company provides our unique blend of research-based results-driven services that improve learning outcomes for our students. All right, we appreciate you tuning in. Make sure to navigate to our solutiontree.com slash podcast page to listen to our other episodes. There you can subscribe to our podcast today.
And also remember to like our episodes and subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. All right. So this has been your host, Prisma Lopez Marine. And Kim Ennis. Thank you for joining us for this podcast, Charting New Paths in Pre-K-12 Education.